Hello and welcome to Wheels Boy. Before we begin today's review, I'm hoping you can indulge me by participating in a short mental exercise. I want you to take a second to close your eyes and picture a Rubik's Cube with primeval chaos inside of it. Now, I don't know exactly what image sprung to your mind when I said that phrase, but it probably wasn't anything like this, a compact SUV. And yet here we are, about to test drive the Beijing Rubik's Cube. The primeval chaos part, you're gonna have to stick around to find out what that's about. With hands-on test drives and reviews of exciting Chinese market vehicles, Wheelsboy is the number one source for China Auto Insights. Be sure to check us out on Instagram and Facebook. I should mention that the official English name for this car is the X55-2, however the direct translation of its Chinese name is Rubik's Cube, which is way better, so that's what we'll be calling it during the video. The Rubik's Cube is a product of a brand called Beijing, itself part of state-owned automaker BAIC. The exterior styling of this car is reminiscent of about a dozen other cars that I can think of, most of which are Chinese. Here on the front end, I'm seeing Chang'an Uni V all over the place, especially here in the headlights and down here with this very unique looking grille. On the side, BYD UN Plus, known as the Atto 3 in the Australian market, and a little bit of VW ID series. I think all of it comes together pretty well, but it does come off as a little bit generic. Also, at first glance, you would definitely think that this was an electric car, but it's not. 1.5 liter four cylinder under here. One area where I think that Beijing spent a good amount of money and time was in the design of the lights, both front and rear. There's some interesting detailing in both of them. Let's open up the back and see about the space. This car is about the same length as a Honda CRV, about 4.6 something meters. So not a big car, but not so tiny either. Rear cargo space, very decent, including some storage over here on the side as well. Taking a seat inside of this car will remind you why it comes in at such a low price point, about 14 to 22,000 US dollars. The material qualities are not so great. The buttons on the steering wheel are honestly some of the cheapest that I've ever interacted with in my life. However, there are some good things about the inside of this car. Starting with the number of features, again, 14 to 22,000 dollars, but at least on the higher spec models, you have things like a HUD, a heads up display, which I've never seen in a car this cheap. You also have a very large, about 15 inch screen here, which is powered by, as I mentioned, Primeval Chaos. That's right, this car's operating system is based on the Harmony OS from Huawei. We saw that previously on the Ito M5 that we reviewed. This one has a different UI, and that UI's Chinese name is Hongmeng, which translates directly to Primeval Chaos. Primeval Chaos is our direct translation of the Chinese name for the Rubik's Cube's UI. There is no official English name for it as far as we can tell, but to be fair to the Beijing brand, its name doesn't sound quite so grandiose in the original Chinese. So what is it really like to interact with Primeval Chaos inside of a car? Well, as I mentioned before, this is based on the Harmony OS from Huawei. That is also uses a Huawei chip as well. We interacted with a Huawei uh, Harmony OS system in the Ito M5 and we found it to be quite good. This system is a bit simpler, not as many apps available for example, however, it does retain some of the more useful features from Huawei's Harmony OS system in the Ito M5. For example, you are able to move the apps around on the screen and rearrange them much the way you would on your phone screen. So I was driving here and using the GPS and I felt like the icon was just a little bit too far away from me. So I long pressed and dragged it over here. And there you go, much more convenient. In addition to all the controls here on the screen, you also have a very interesting set of buttons here. Very, very subtle. These are touch capacitive buttons kind of buried into this little black panel here. This is a early production or even pre-production vehicle. So some of these functions aren't activated, but, and I don't really know exactly what they do. This one's definitely Bluetooth. This one is for your camera. This one is for, it says mode, but I don't know what it is. And then this one, probably the most useful, allows you to simply open up the apps section on the screen. It's pretty cool. I've never seen anything like this before over for the passenger side. This car might not have a little robot face on the dashboard like something like a Neo. However, it does have a kind of interface here for its operating system. If I hit the button, 
to talk to it, this lights up. It's almost like talking to R2-D2 in Star Wars. As I mentioned before, this car is nearly the exact same length as a Honda CRV, perhaps a little bit longer. Same goes for the wheelbase. It's about 2.735 meters long, a tiny bit longer than that of the CRV. As a result, rear legroom is quite decent. This seat is adjusted for me. In fact, it's a little far back for me, and I still have a very decent amount of legroom as well as headroom. Up above, you can see there is also a very large sunroof. Down here, we have a single USB port. I prefer to see two, but again, very cheap car. And finally, your fold-down armrest with cup holders. Despite what the exterior styling would lead you to believe, the Rubik's Cube is not an EV. In fact, it's powered by a 1.5 liter turbocharged four cylinder, making 138 kilowatts and 305 newton meters of torque, AKA 185 horsepower and 225 pound feet. That's backed by a seven speed DCT. All of that torque is available from just 1500 RPM. So this thing feels pretty peppy off the line, especially attached to the DCT. However, as the zero to 100 kilometer per hour time of 7.8 seconds would indicate, it runs out of breath pretty soon after that. What's really interesting about this engine, however, is that according to Beijing, it shares parts, if not the whole architecture, with the 2.0-liter turbo 4 from the Mercedes-Benz GLC. That may sound a little bit unbelievable, until you remember that BAIC, the mother company for Beijing, this brand, has been Mercedes-Benz joint venture partner here in China since around 2005. That means they're responsible for producing the local versions of Mercedes-Benz models, like the GLC. Not only that, but BAIC is the largest shareholder in Daimler. Does that mean this car drives like a Mercedes-Benz? No, definitely not. This thing is not attached to an automatic transmission like the Mercedes. It doesn't shift as smooth as a Mercedes, and the power delivery isn't quite as smooth as a Mercedes either. It's not terrible, about on par with other competitors in this class. NVH is a little bit higher than other cars I've driven, but still very much acceptable. It also doesn't handle like a Mercedes-Benz, but I don't expect it to do that for just 22,000 US dollars. It handles about mid-pack for this segment. There's a decent amount of body roll for sure. It doesn't feel particularly well planted. However, it's not rolling over on its side or anything. The ride is also pretty good, pretty comfortable. It's got a McPherson strut up front, multi-link in the rear. That's pretty much standard for this segment. One of the things I have to complain about though, well, it's this steering. And I have to tell you, I am moving this wheel quite a bit, and this car is barely changing direction at all. This is the loosest steering that I've used in a modern vehicle in quite some time. The Rubik's Cube is available with B-Pilot, Beijing's L2 driver assistance system. We spent some time using the system on the highway, and while it's obviously not as advanced as systems from companies like Xpeng or Tesla, it does make your daily commute a bit easier thanks to its adaptive cruise control. Well, the Beijing Rubik's Cube has a very impressive list of standard features, including that big screen, that HUD, and the assisted driving system. I gotta say, a lot of its competitors have better material qualities and a better driving experience. Overall, if those are things you value a bit more, there's better options on the market. Thank you very much for watching today's video. Be sure to check us out on Instagram and Facebook, as well as our new website. All the links are in the description below. And as always, like, subscribe, and hit the bell.